I'll read from the Bible. Today's passage is Mark, chapter 8, verses 1 through 9. Mark, chapter 8, verses 1 through 9. During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way, because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered, But where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people, and they did so. They had a few small fish as well. He gave thanks for them also and told the disciples to distribute them. The people ate and were satisfied. After the afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. About 4,000 were present. Please allow me to pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this opportunity to worship you this morning. To be able to worship you, Lord, is something that we have from grace and we're so thankful for this miracle. Lord, we're able to lift up your name, and we can hope that you, we pray that your name will be uh, worshipped and glorified to the ends of the earth. Lord, we want to learn more about you today and be even closer to you. We want, Lord, to be able to share you with as many people as possible. So, Lord, please use us. We want your gospel, Lord, to be able to be told uh, to as many people as possible. We ask that the Holy Spirit prepare our hearts and fill our hearts as well. Allow us, Lord, to be able to have a clear understanding of the message today. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with gratitude. Amen. Amen. Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to have a message um, going over the passage. It was read just a moment ago. Just a while back on Twitter and SNS, there was a mother's post that really caught everybody's attention. She <laughs> had this post about this picture, she had this picture of this third, her son who was a third grader who had just left for school and it was a picture of their entryway. And there was just things he had forgotten like all over the entryway of the house. And a lot of parents responded to this post. They're like, oh, this is the same for my kid and my kid and my kid. And, and for me as well. So and I, when I see that he's, for, you know, my son's forgotten his, his pen case, pencil case and even his backpack, sometimes his mask, it's stuff all over the place. And I was just like, this is crazy. And so I, I, I put, I made, I've made an effort now to make sure that there's everything's out of the entryway before I take him to school. And then one time when I did so, I saw that he, he had everything with him, but he was wearing my shoes. It's like, oh my gosh, this is just hopeless. And because this can keep continued on, I decided to ask a veteran mom here at the church for advice on this. And so I said, how, how long is it that kids keep forgetting things? And she said the following. She said, well, boys, always. <laughs> just give up on it. They're never going to remember. <laughs> so... You can see that 
you just realize how many times can you say the same things and they still don't get it. And that's just what you feel inside, right? You want to say something like to them. And also, when you read the Bible, there's also instances in which when we have the same uh, you know, opinion about the disciples, we're just like, this, Jesus just told you this. He just did the same miracle. Why is it, you know, he told you that he's going to be resurrected. Why aren't you understanding this? And so today's passage is one of those instances. Let me just explain a little bit of the background of today's passage. Today's passage, Jesus is gone to an area that's in where the Gentiles are. And there's people there who have heard about Jesus, and uh, about 4,000 of these Gentiles have uh, gathered, and that's just the men alone. So if you add in uh, the you know women and children and so on, it'd be around 20,000 perhaps. And many people brought uh, people needing healing uh, to Jesus, and he healed them, and they were very impressed, and they just totally forgot about what time it is. They were so impressed. There was a problem that occurred, though. And that's what's mentioned in today's passage from verses 1 to 3. It says, During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to them and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come a long distance. You can see that they were so impressed with all the miracles Jesus was doing that they hadn't eaten in three days. And there was 4,000 men alone, and everyone was hungry. In light of this, Jesus was wanting to find some way, to, uh, to, was looking to feed them. And what is it that happened? Well, the disciples had actually seen Jesus do a miracle where he increased the number of bread and fish. However, what is it that Je how is it that Jesus responded here, or his disciples responded? His disciples said in verse 4, But where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? So when you look at the disciples' um, response, you just like, why is it that they would say that? You know, the, he, Jesus just did the miracle like this. How is it that they wouldn't remember? And he had done it for you know, by in the same way of increasing um, fish and bread. However, the disciples were in a situation now that if we understand from a better perspective, we can possibly understand why. Why they didn't have us understanding that Jesus would do another miracle. One reason is, is that these 4,000 men here were Gentiles. And in those days, uh, I'm sorry, today we're going to be going over the topic of the God who draws even those far away, looking at three points. The first point is grace given to people far from salvation as well. A while ago, when we were going through Mark 6, we went over the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000, and that was actually a miracle geared at the Jewish people. However, in today's passage, these are Gentiles who had gathered. And so that's possibly why the disciples gave a different response, weren't, uh, were giving a different response to Jesus than we might imagine. More than we can imagine, there was this huge gap between the Gentiles and Jews back in that day. Jews and Gentiles were seen differently as Israel's Israelites were people who were God's chosen people. God chose Ab Abram in many, many years prior and in Genesis 12, 1, 3, it says the following. The Lord has said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. In other words, the Israelites were those chosen by God people chosen by God, and in, he was cho God chose them to bless other people. That was their job or position. However, thereafter, what is it that Israelites did? They, when it was actually the, time, the Jesus day, there was a group of the uh, 
people by the name of uh, by the name of Pharisees who actually looked down on Gentiles and they totally forgot what their position was as being sele selected people of God. Jew, uh, to Gentiles were seen in those days as people far from God and people who were not worthy of God's grace. So you might wonder something that when you're th considering this, why is it that God would create Gentiles if they weren't supposed to be saved? The Pharisees in those days believe that Jews, uh, sorry, that, that Gentiles were created for hell. <laughs> and that's what they taught. There's uh, instances of this recorded. The disciples possibly were uh, influenced by the Pharisees to some extent in this manner. However, amidst this, Jesus still showed his grace to, toward many uh, Gentiles. For example, the Phoenician woman and the Sumerian woman, and also the Roman centurion. You can see in this way that the disciples would have noticed that Jesus was not just focusing on Jews. However, at that time, they probably didn't have their eyes completely open to notice this. And you, they were probably wondering, was it even, wor was Jesus even, wor uh, were the Gentiles even worthy of Jesus' miracles? They didn't even eat meals with Gentiles because they were so uh, distanced from them. However, what is it that Jesus did? He saw the 4,000 Gentiles in front of him, and he gave them the same grace that he had earlier given to the Jews. He took the seven loaves of bread and fish, and he was able to satisfy the hunger of those 4,000. This, this instance would actually show that Jesus' grace and God's grace is not just for uh, the Jewish people, but for all people, including Gentiles. So Gentiles were also targeted for God's grace. In today's day as well, there are people we may consider very far from God's salvation. And so let's consider that for just a moment. For us in this present day, we may believe that there are people who, for which it is di difficult to accept Jesus Christ as Savior. I would like to uh, just give four examples. First of all, the Jewish people in present Israel, there are it's very difficult or very uncommon for Jews to become Christians. That's uh, partly due to their history. In Jesus' days, there were many Jews, and after Jesus uh, was, was died and resurrected, his uh, the grace for salvation was proclaimed over all people, including G and Gentiles. And, but unfortunately, there's an anti-Semitism, and Christian countries have actually persecuted uh, Jews, and that's part of our unfortunate history. There's been a lot of cr crusaders, and there's also uh, the, also the uh, Holocaust with Hitler for uh, targeted at Jews as well. Of course, Hitler was not Christian, but he was part of the, the efforts to uh, target Jews and possibly considered some aspects of Christianity as he lived in that area. However, it's a totally unconceivable situation. However, in 1948, when Israel was established again, there's been an increase in the number of Jewish Christians. In, in, those, in that time, there was only a few Messianic Jews Jewish Christians, in other words. And in 70, this period of 70 years, though, that has increased to at least 30,000 people. You can see that in this way, that we are truly living in a miraculous day. In addition, you may think that the next group of people is also far from salvation. 
That is the Islamic extremist terrorist. This group of people, of course, you would consider to be far from salvation because of what they believe. However, we know that Jesus is reaching out his hand out to them as well. In 2009, there was the famous uh, Islamic fundamentalist organization by the name of Hamas, and the son of the leader actually became a Christian, and that just shot around the world. His uh, name is Mohazab, Mosab Hassan Youssef, and in the Bible as well, we can see how Paul, who was a Christian persecutor, had his church uh, heart changed to become Christian. And you can also consider that a scientist would be a hard group of people to reach, reach as well with the gospel. In general, many people think that the, Bi the Bible is a non-scientific book. And these people think that people long ago just gave credit to God for miracles, for things they couldn't explain. However, now that we have scientific research and so on, we can explain uh, things that long ago they probably couldn't have been explained. And then they can, the scientists just assume that we don't need God because of that. However, this is incorrect thinking. According to a United Nations survey, they found that in the past 300 years, there has been about, uh, which uh, the survey that was targeted at uh, 300 scientists, how many people believed in God? And according to their data, they found that, it, that it, about 90% of the scientists actually believed in God. Why is it that scientists actually come to faith in God? Well, it's in that their research that they they find out about God's amazing works. When they study outer space, for example, they find that God's expanse and his immenseness. Or when they come in contact with the mystery of life, they can see the work of the hands of our Creator. In this way, many scientists actually come to know and believe the existence of the true God. And the last, the fourth group of people far from salvation may be considered you're actually your family or friends. You may think, oh man, I just really don't think this person is ever going to get a chance to be saved. But I would like you to recall when you think such things that if God is able to change the hearts of even Islamic extremist terrorists and scientists, then there is nothing too impossible for him to do in the hearts of those who you, you love who are around you. We can have hope in this way. God is still reaching out to people far from salvation in the day we live in today. So I'd like you to remember that from the passage we're looking at. The second point we're going over today is how God uses the, use the disciples or uses disciples. In order to reach these people far from Christ, he uses people to reach them in many cases. And how is it exactly that this happens? In many cases, he uses us Christians to do so. In today's passage, Jesus was going to feed these 4,000, and he used the disciples, there, his disciples there, to do so. Verse 6. He told this crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves of, and given thanks, he broke them and gave them into his disciples and to distribute to the people. And they did so. In this way, Jesus used his disciples to meet the needs of people in need. And in today's day, we can see how God uses us to reach people who are truly seemingly far away from him. He uses us. As I just explained about the salvation of the Jews, how is it that we, they, we can, these, Jesus, uh, these Jews can come to know the true salvation of Jesus Christ today? One of the ways they learn it is through the Internet. 
they want they look for example and to see what is it that christians believe and they can access christian websites freely of course and in this way they can come to know the true jesus christ that's one reason however the greatest reason they're coming to faith in in jesus christ is that in israel there have been a lot of people who have a lot of christians who are doing work to reach them for example bfp or bridges for peace is an organization that is exactly uh, working in this direction they are working with poor jews who are returning to their home country and through bfp they Men, Christians from around the world are being used to reach out to Jewish people. In our church as well, Ishimoto-san and Kuro-san are also working for BFP to reach such Jewish people. The, the love expressed through the BFP members has able to reach has been able to reach the hearts of many of these Jewish people. In the September issue of Olive Life, it was stated that there is a, they, they gave us stories, they wrote a story about the Jerusalem prayer breakfast. And this is a time when these Christian uh, leaders and uh, other leaders gather in Israel to pray for the peace of Israel. Up until this time, this has been something unthinkable, but now it's actually coming to pass. And the last prayer of the recent one was given by Rebecca Bremer, a leader of uh, of the president. Uh, sorry, the president of BFP. Through BFP, the people of Israel have been able to experience the unconditional love of our God through Christians. They've been able to remove various um, prejudices that Jewish people have about Christians and come to know the truth of our true God. And this is actually something that would be inconceivable years ago to think that Christians would actually be able to reach the hearts of these Jewish people and that they would be willing to listen and accept Christ. This is also true of people reaching Islamic is extremist terrorists as well. As I was explaining a little bit ago, the son of the Islamic funnelist by the name once again of Mosab Hassan Youssef, when he was young, actually, he was uh, trained up to be a terrorist. However, when he became a youth, he knew exactly the details of his org that organization and he realized there was no hope there however uh, there was a christian um, man from the uk who spoke to him once and asked him to join in a bible study and so he just kind of hid his identity and participated in this bible study in doing so he learned that jesus was the savior and he professed faith and was baptized and this was because of this uh, traveler, this U UK traveler, who was able to reach out to him. There's, this is the same for, all, for many scientists as well, of Christians reaching them. Co-workers and friends and family members have been able to reach them for Christ as well. And once again, the final group of people I explain are difficult to reach family and members and friends. It's true that in many cases, these people are reached by each and every one of us. It's me, it's you. God uses each and every person to reach such people. He wants us to be able to tell them about Jesus. And in this way, we can use not only our words, but as mentioned in First Peter, we can use our actions to be able to reach such people and tell, give testimony of Jesus. Let's look at the third point today. It's aligning with Jesus' heart. In today's passage, Jesus is 
filling the stomachs of these 4,000 people there. And let's one, look again, once again, verse 2, for the reason why he's doing so. It's because he says that he has compassion for them. And this isn't just that he felt sorry for them, but actually there is the word splenchizomai, and it, the meaning is that your internal organs are in pain. It's, it's just such strong compassion for something. And in this way, Jesus had compassion not only for their stomachs, but for their souls. In our lives, we have all kinds of different human relations. And of course, there's a lot of great ones. But at the same time, there are also instances where there are problems in our human relationships with other peoples. And some, some of them can be quite challenging. And when we meet such challenging people, how is it that we think? Sometimes we get angry. Or we want to profess judgment against them. However, at times like that, it is really important to remember about Jesus Christ. It's important to remember the Holy Spirit and to turn our ears and our hearts toward him. We, may re we need to look not at their outward uh, actions and words, but rather to consider their inner uh, situation and their heart and soul. There was once a time when somebody came in for consultation and they said the following. They said, I have this friend that I really want to bring to church. It's because he really doesn't have a clue about how to get along with other people. And he just, he often says things that are not appropriate to others and a lot of people just go away from him and I also just don't even want to be around this person but I realize I can't just turn him away I know because that uh, this person sorry it's a woman that she was actually hurt very poor, badly when she was young and in that way she's just so she really does need to know that he have be healed by Jesus so I really want to bring her here when I heard that, I realized that the, that person's heart truly was that of Jesus. When you re meet up with somebody who hurts other people, you may wonder why it is that they would hurt others. But rather, getting angry about the cause of it, we need to think about their, the, heart of their, the situation of their soul and heart. Lastly, I would like to share the prayer of Henry Nowen. He, he prayed once when somebody, he was angry at somebody. He prayed, Jesus, I pray for my, those who hurt me and my enemies, and I don't want to look down on them, but Lord, allow me to be able to see them as people in need, in need of you. And Lord, please give me the courage and, and uh, grace to be able to reach them. And Jesus, allow me to know the best way to be able to reach them in your name. Today, we've looked at the, the miracle where Jesus fed 4,000 people. In today's day as well, he, Jesus is reaching out to such people who seem far from him as, as well. And he uses such disciples as us. We can be have our hearts aligned with Jesus and give testimony of him in the various places he has us placed. Around Japan now, the Christian population is about 1%, and uh, we haven't been able to increase that number in a long, in a long time. <laughs> However, I truly believe that if we're able to just tell at the under 99% the gospel in a way they can understand it, I believe many people would believe the reason why is that all people have sinned from Adam and Eve, and everyone needs Jesus. And it, they do realize this. That's what they need is salvation. It is our job to be able to be proud of the cross of Jesus Christ and give testimony of him. Please allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, 
Thank you so much for this time to be able to worship you this morning. Today we've looked at the story of the miracle of feeding 4,000 people. We remember that Jesus in those days was reaching out to people considered very far from God's grace and salvation. And remember how not only the Jews, but Gentiles were saved as well. That is the same today. We realize that there are people who, in our lives where we can see they're far from you, but we know that you use us to reach such people. Lord, in order for the gospel to truly reach them, please, Lord, use us Christians as disciples to be able to reach them. Allow us, Lord, through our human relationships with others to be able to truly share the gospel in a way people can understand it so that they, so we can be proud of uh, Jesus' uh, uh, gospel and give testimony in your honor. We're about to start uh, heading into the holiday season, going into October. Many people are interested and excited about Christmas, Christmas each year. However, it's also true that many don't know the true meaning of Christmas. Christmas. We want them to be able to understand the true reason why Jesus came. Please, Lord, allow us to be able to do so. We thank you for this opportunity. Pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we'll pray for a moment in silence. <laughs> 